This is a Delica. It's a DP 189. Relatively high hardness. Relatively high carbide. Powder metallurgy steel. I've been doing some edge retention comparisons with the cubic boron nitride rods versus the medium rods and some other finishes. And a variety of media, wood, plastic, cardboard, rope. And I thought it'd be interesting to explore some of the things I've been talking about using the fine rods as well. Because a lot of people like to not only end with these, but like to do touch-up sharpening with them. Now quite frankly, drawing a distinction between sharpening a knife and honing or touching up a knife is complete nonsense. Because you're making a dichotomy. You're making two things different that are essentially the same. And it overcomplicates the matter and gets people thinking that there's some difference going on that there really isn't. Fundamentally, they're exactly the same. So I had some more dirty polypropylene rope. And interestingly enough, cutting dirty materials is actually the best case scenario for a knife in terms of repeated sharpening when you're not cutting off the damaged or fatigued metal on the edge. Because a very dirty material abrades the edge rather harshly and grinds away that uh, fatigued or bent metal which can stop it from building up. So this is sort of like best case scenario for using the fine stones repeatedly just by themselves because again the dirty polypropylene rope prevents the buildup of a fatigued edge because it grinds away that damaged metal to some extent while you're cutting. And again because you're cutting with very low force you're not bending the edge back and forth severely. So I thought it'd be interesting to look at repeated sharpening with the medium and fine rods only in a best case scenario for the fine rods which is cutting a relatively soft but abrasive material with a knife that's very hard, very strong and optimized just for cutting. So this knife didn't look like this uh, when I got it. It's been heavily used, reground a bunch of times. It has almost a full uh, taper to a very light convex just due to uh, wear of the stone that's generally used to shape it. Now, procedure was quite basic. So I start off with the uh, Bester 700, which is also heavily used. I use that to grind off all damaged material from the edge, bring the edge to a relatively smooth apex. Then I sharpen it with medium rods, five passes per side on 15 degrees, one pass per side on 20 degrees just to minimize the burr, then five passes per side on 15 degrees, ultra light force just to refine and eke out that little bit of final sharpness. Then cut the polypropylene rope measuring the sharpness in various increments, recording the initial sharpness, the sharpness along the way, and then calculating the total cutting efficiency as a measure of edge retention. And then, once the knife is sufficiently dull, resharpen with just medium rods only, same procedure, five pass per side, and two pass per side for burr removal, five pass per side, minimize and bring out that apex, and repeat that five times. And very similar to as before, the medium rods in this case can retain a very high level of sharpness and can retain that edge retention. They both degrade as time goes on but they degrade only slightly and after about five runs you're getting a hint that the edge retention is getting less but it looks like it's going to have to take much more runs to really bring it out. So for short term using the medium rods only just to bring that edge back on a soft abrasive material with a rather hard uh, steel looks to be rather functional. Then take the best route again after that was done, cut the edge off, reform the edge with the bester and then sharpen it, same procedure on the fine rods. Five passes per side on the 15s, one pass per side on the 20s just to minimize that burr and then five passes per side on the 15s just to refine that apex with ultra light passes. 
Same procedure then, measure the initial sharpness, do some cutting on the polypropylene rope, and repeat that again five times, and you end up with a great big pile of little tiny pieces of polypropylene rope. Interestingly enough, there is an immediate difference between using the fine rods in that even the first time I go to resharpen the edge again, five passes per side doesn't cut it. And then each time after that, I have to use more passes, more passes. Now, the first two passes bring all the metal right back to the apex again and remove any light reflecting from the edge. And most people would think, yeah, okay, that's relatively decently sharp. And in fact, it picks up like a, a shaving sharpness, uh, sort of a wet shaving ability or a bit of a scraping ability almost immediately. But to get it really sharp, um, sort of approaching the first trial, by the end, after doing five sharpening sessions, I'm almost having to do ten times as many passes with the fine rods. And even with ten times as many passes with the fine rods, I'm not getting uh, the edge fully back to the optimal sharpness, and the edge retention is steadily decreasing. And if you look at the edge under magnification, you can see there's some very tiny chips uh, starting to build up, which are on a scale of around 5 microns or so, and the fine rods are just not removing them. So you're getting this progression of damage setting in that's not being removed, even if you're doing many, many, many passes, because again, the fine rods are very polishing. And unfortunately, what happens is, uh, because the contact area is rather small uh, and because it's not very abrasive you're getting a lot of deformation or pushing of the edge back rather than abrading and this could be one of the reasons why uh, a lot of people regard steels like ZDP 189 as being uh, ultra brittle because the knives can be kind of expensive uh, people are ultra concerned about wasting steel so they avoid the more coarse abrasives. They use only very fine abrasives, uh, especially when they do their touch-up or honing, which again, which I told you, it's complete nonsense to try to separate out some kind of honing or touching up versus actual sharpening. It's the same procedure. You're just eliminating steps, which generally isn't uh, a sensible thing to do. But in any case, so the knife gets stalled, they go back to only the fine rods, because again, they don't want to waste steel, very expensive steel. And you'll often hear people say something like, oh, well, the thing about ZDP-89 is you can never let it get dull, keep sharpening it, keep sharpening it, just do touch-ups or honing. So what happens is someone gets it, gets a little bit dull, just use the fine rods on it, gets a little bit dull, just use the fine rods, and you get this progression of all these little chips coming into the edge, which you can't see, they're only about 5 microns. But eventually they build up and build up. Someone goes to cut something like a zip tie. Boom, the edge chips out. And then they look and say, wow, that's because the ZDP 189 is brittle. No, it's because you're not sharpening it in a sensible way whatsoever. And you're letting damage build up on the edge, which is weakening that edge, which is making it more brittle. So the interesting thing is, a number of things came out of that. Uh, even in best case scenario, where you got a really strong, really hard steel, and you're cutting a soft but abrasion resistant material with a knife that's optimized to cut well, so you're applying very low force, even when all these things are true, using the fine rods alone tends to steadily degrade the performance, and you're steadily having to do many, many more passes to try to get the edge retention and initial sharpness back up, and you really can't maintain it. Um, just using the fine rods alone. Medium rods alone do tend to work well, or looks like they work well in the short term. They can do about five resharpenings before you start to see a little bit of degradation. But again, this is in best case scenario. Very strong steel, which doesn't deform very much. A very soft material, which doesn't make the steel deform very much and a very abrasive material which is grinding into the edge, removing that weakened steel as it gets a little bit fatigued. If any one of these are not true, then the medium rods will start to behave like the finer rods, 
and you'll want to go with the cubic boron nitride rods or more coarse abrasive when you're sharpening to get rid of that fatigue metal and bring you back to that optimal performance. Now, the interesting thing is, again, a lot of people get these sort of more expensive steels, which are not necessarily better in any sensible definition of the word, unless you define better as being more expensive, in which case they're better. But they buy these more expensive steels, and because they're expensive, again, they're trying to conserve steel as much as possible, and using those very light abrasives, and just doing, again, that honing or touch-up, instead of a full sharpening. Well, what that does is very quickly, it reduces the performance of these steels, even in the best case scenario, for high carbide steels, which is slicing abrasive material, to a performance standard, which very quickly will become equal to something like VG10, which is fully sharpened each time. So just think about that. Rather than buying a knife like this, which is rather expensive, more expensive steel, and using it and sharpening it in a way which degrades the performance, you could actually get superior performance by buying a much more basic steel and sharpening it optimally and not being concerned about wasting the material because you're no longer having fatigued or chipped metal on the edge. You're always grinding a fresh edge, so you always get that optimal performance out of the steel. So even in cases where a high carbide steel would be better, which is not in every case. Again, it's mainly when you're slicing abrasive material. Unless you sharpen it in an optimal manner, it will very quickly degrade down to the level of VG10 and then very quickly go down below that where it starts behaving like 420HC and it keeps dropping down unless you grind that fresh metal back to the edge again. So, interesting little set of experiments on combining uh, grit finishes and just doing multiple runs and just seeing the effects of when various abrasives stop being effective. And again, very nice little knife by Spyderco. This is a Delica and Zaddy P189. Again, didn't look a lot like this when I first got it. This trial wasn't here. This wasn't the blade shape and it didn't have this primary grind.